me Gobbled to steal the show and make you happy. Ha! <laughs> Bet you thought over there was gonna be Felsbug, didn't ya? Well, he's in the bathroom right now, and I'm rushing in and taking advantage of the situation. So, uh, hold on, move over a little bit. Yeah, there it is. Gubs Lab reviewing Galvatron. Oh man, and this is going to be good because Galvatron is one of my favorites. I mean, I absolutely loved when he showed up in Coronation Starscream. And then he blew Starscream to little pieces to show what a baby he was. Come on, why Megatron never killed Starscream beyond me? I mean, just get rid of him, he's dead weight. Anyway, yeah, and then Rodimus. Don't get me started on Rodimus Prime. What'd he do to Galvatron? Oh, they fight, and what did he do? Threw him out a window. Death by window, and he wasn't even dead. He just landed on Char in a hot bath. Why couldn't Fu have done that to me? Threw me out a window and I land in a bath. No, I gotta be Felsberg's slave. It's just wrong. <sighs> Compose yourself, Gubsland. You're better than this. Yes, I am. Alright, anyway, let's on with the review. Now, we have the bad guy in the movie, Galvatron. Which probably means he's Megatron. Improved. I mean, come on, that's not even a secret or anything. I mean, if it's Galvatron, it's Megatron. Only better. And he becomes a truck, which is pretty awesome. So, let's take a look at this and... Hold on a second. I don't want to use these stupid things. Come on. Who really wants to use these things? Handy hands, get over here. I don't care what you're drawing. It better be me in a good picture. Not like last time. Come on. Yeah. Turn this sucker around. Do it. There's the side. Transformers. Next! Well, there you go. Galvatron. And man, oh man. I do like the way he looks over there. Hold on. I'm getting too much glare. There. I lowered the glare just for you. Thank you, Gubslav, said no one ever. All right, Galvatron. It says, when Optimus Prime dealt a crushing blow to Megatron in the Battle of Chicago. What? Wait, 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 wait a minute. A crushing blow? Hold on. He took an axe af after Megatron saved Optimus Prime's life. Optimus Prime took an axe slammed it into Megatron's head, and ripped off his head and his spinal column. That's not a crushing blow. That's an execution. I know I've witnessed a few and been party to a few. I mean, here's what it should say. When Optimus Prime went Jeffrey Dahmer on Megatron in the Battle of Chicago, the triumph was short-lived. The victorious Autobots were rewarded with exile and new enemies determined to bring about their total destruction. If there was ever any doubt, the Autobots now know for certain. As long as there's a Decepticon with a spark in his circuits, their centuries-old war will continue. Centuries? You know, millennia is usually what people say. And even that, you know, come on, millions of years is what they've been fighting for. Who wrote this? Probably the same guy who wrote the Eagle Fire Fire Bow. Or whatever that was, the Firing Eagle Fire Bow. That's what it was. <sighs> Terrible. All right, Danny Hans, move that to the front again. And there you go. So let's go open this up. I'll take a look at it. And I'll let you know what I think. Because my opinion matters. More than yours. And especially more than Felsbug. Let's get on with it. Now, here we have Galvatron in his truck mode. And I must say, this is an absolutely fantastic truck. I mean, I love it. It's black. And I remember when it first came out, everybody's like, Alright, this is Motormaster. Or maybe Scourge. 
Or maybe a black truck that we don't know. Or maybe it's a new Optimus Prime. Well, people said a lot of things. But this one right here, wow. I love the look of it. It looks fantastic. And it's great to have a Megatron truck. I mean, even in Transformers 3, I wanted to see Optimus and Megatron. Truck to truck battle. But we didn't get that. So, um, yes. Now, um, before I go and show you all of this, uh, let's get handy. Handy hands, come here. Yeah, you, get over here. You gotta help me with this stupid thing. Good. Glad you're there, handy hands. Not really, you're a moron. Anyway, now, you just turn it when I tell you to, handy hands. There you go from the side, and it looks rather nice on the side. Now tilt it upward. There you go. I mean, look how good that looks from the side. Now, they could have gone and painted the wheels, as they're all black, and I think that's really cheap to not paint them. But it does look pretty good from the side. Now when you get to the top, turn it. Okay, flip it up. Yeah. Look at that. I mean, they didn't even try. And that's just terrible. So, um, yeah, there he is. Turn it to the other side. So there you go. Galvatron on that side and the front. And there you go from the front. And it does look very fantastic truck, but it has flaws. So let's go and transform this thing. All right, handy hands. You get to do some transforming and do it right. Oh wait, quick, show him the gun. Yeah, there's his gun. All right, turn it, you moron. And again, and again, and again. Now I'll push the button so it fires. There you go. There you saw the gun. So, he dropped it like a moron. There you saw the gun and the missile over here. Get it, put it back in. You can't even figure out how to do that. He's such an idiot, handy hands. How does Felsbug put up with you? And there it is. So, you won't see the gun anymore because I don't like it. Moving on. Next, the transformation. Now, the transformation is pretty easy for people with fingers, but if you have a uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex hands, it's really difficult. That's why I brought in Handy Hands, because he seems to be pretty nimble with his ability to do these things. So I'll just let Handy Hands do his thing, and I'll try to comment. So apparently you move down the sides over there. Okay, handy hands. Quick, carry up a little bit faster. Then he's pulling apart the legs to reveal the arms. Oh no, to reveal the feet. Yes, of course, I just said legs and feet. And then there's heel spurs. Yes, yes. Okay. And they make a clicking noise when they're done. Very nice job, handy hands. And you're rotating the legs. All right, rotate the legs. Add to the cab. What part? You're going to open the front, the sides. Oh, the cap. The top part. All right, you open up the top part. So you open up the top part, and then what are you going to do, handy hands? Aha, the wheels. You're an idiot. I think you messed up on that. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Now you flip back the cab, and you're going to pull up the arms, alright, pulling up the arms, and then flip the shoulders forward. Ah, uh, I see. That's not too difficult. And the head, alright, the head comes up, and clicks, very good. Now what do you do with this ridiculous backpack? I mean, it's huge. It's enormous. I mean, why is it here? It's like, why do they want to put big backpacks on all the Transformers? It doesn't make any... Wow, that's pretty cool that it folds down like that. Right. All right. And then what do you do with it? All right. Then there's a blue part that... Hold on. Oh, wait, wait. Let me show that. That Point to it right there. Yeah. The blue part flips up. Locks in there. And if you've done it all right like my friend Handy Hands did, 
you will get Galvatron in his robot mode. Thusly. And if you didn't do it right, then you're probably a moron and should go cry to your mommy. Alright, let's show the details. Next! And here we have Galvatron in his robot mode. And does he have any? No, of course not. He doesn't have any light piping at all. But right there. And he really has a very demonic face. And it actually reminds me more of something out of Power Rangers than a Transformer. So it's very unusual. And it being this silver plastic, which is not bad. It's not like that um, Prime Megatron that was bone white. I mean, it does have some color, but all the details that are in this. I mean, this is actually a fantastically detailed mold. But they're lost. So probably if you have some paint, you might want to paint it and liven it up a bit. I do like the metallic blues that are in there. That little gold that's in the center part, that's that hole. I don't know why he just has a hole. I mean, it should be something, but no. But overall, he's a pretty nice looking figure. And he has that backpack. Turn it around, and ends. So if we go to the side... And yes, there's a backpack, which is smooshed down very nicely. But it ends up looking like a jetpack. And it really does. Now, but even at the bottom, if you look at the legs, there's a lot of details throughout the entire figure that really help. Pick it up, handy hands. Yeah, move it toward the camera for the legs. I mean, look at that. That does look very nice. I like all the little details all the way around. You know, it's even um, shows hand, even though his hand is hollow. To uh, help with it, they actually added those lines for details, which does help it look a little better. I like it. Now, as far as articulation goes on Galvatron, well, of course, he's going to be hindered by his backpack. But his arms do move up, out. The shoulder will rotate 360. As will below the shoulder, 360 right there. He's got a double elbow, which is very nice. No wrist articulation. All right, now, no waist articulation, which is bad. And the legs, well, I mean, there's the legs. You, know, you can rotate it, but, you know, really, I mean, come on. In this day and age, plus, if you want him to kick forward, he's kind of at a weird angle. So his, you can do it, I mean look, that does look like a kick forward, but it's actually going out at a slight angle, you see that? I'm not too big a fan of that, but I do like that it's ratcheted, or pseudo ratchet. So he's got a hip that goes all the way around ratcheted. He's got a hinge there for left-right movement. And then underneath, right there, he's got another swivel. For the knee, he's got a very poor knee. You move him forward and then turn the knee, you've got that. Because his thigh is so short, he's getting about n almost 90, but it looks like nothing because his knee, his thigh is so short. So many shortcomings on Galvatron, and but I do overall like this. He's the bad guy. How could you not like him? But I'm hoping they're going to make a leader class. A nice quality leader class for this. Because that would be amazing. Yes. So, besides, you're going to buy this because, come on. How many bad guys are there? Right now, none. Yeah, what are you going to get after that? Oh, lockdown? Oh, we've got Galvatron and lockdown. Versus all the Autobots and Dinobots. Fantastic. Come on, get with it, Hasbro. We need more baddies. All right, let's get to the end. I'll tell you what I think. Let's do it. Go. Why are you always delaying with things? All right, Galvatron. Now, let's be fair. 
if you're buying any transformer movie toys, you need a Decepticon. And what other choice do you have? I mean, really, think about it. What's the other Decepticon? And you can't say Lockdown, because Lockdown is a bounty hunter. They've even said that. Michael Bay even said he's a bounty hunter. So, isn't what's the original title of this? Like, um, Rise of the Decepticons? And they have one Decepticon in the toy line right now. There's Dinobots, sure, but they're not necessarily the bad guys. I mean, the Decepticons are the bad guys. And you have Galvatron. That's it. I mean, think for a moment, people. You're gonna buy this toy. Is it the greatest toy ever? No. But is it serviceable? Yes, quite serviceable. And I do enjoy many things. But I'm holding out for a leader class. One other thing, I gotta get off my chest. I mean, really. There's Optimus over there. And that's the, um, Revenge Optimus from, uh, from the uh, advanced AD version. You know, AD 12, I think, is the number. Anyway, I have to say, the brutal killing that Optimus Prime did at the end of Transformers 3, that was amazing. I mean, come on, that's the greatest heel turn ever. Think about it for a moment. Megatron saves Optimus Prime's life. Okay, remember, within the Transformer movies, Megatron is Optimus' brother. Then Optimus proceeds to take an axe, chop Megatron in head, and behead him. After that, he picks up Megatron's gun, walks over to his mentor, who is begging for his life, no Optimus, and blows his head clean off. Now, this has nothing to do with the review, but come on, people, think about it. Optimus is the more brutal killer than even Megatron. And I kind of like that. So, um, yes, Galvatron, you're going to end up buying him because you have no choices in Decepticons. So, enjoy it for what it is. Gubslev, out. I don't... I can't... And it happens. I mean, how many times do I have to argue with you about stupid things like shutting off the camera? I mean, this is ridiculous. Ridiculous. I mean, really, really, that, that's real mature. Yeah, yes, I can read between the lines. I mean, come on. Just, up. Uh, somebody just, uh, come, uh, I'm just gonna, all right, I'll just do it myself, get over here. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just.